What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for The Book of Boba Fett, Season 1, Episode 3, The Streets of Mos Espa. So this week's episode makes further progressions as far as Boba Fett's um, takeover for Mos Espa and the Tatooine Underworld. And it actually solves an issue that I've had with the first two episodes in that it feels like being with him being a notorious bounty hunter, he seems to not really know a lot about the politics and various situations and factions and otherwise all the various criminal elements in the um, Tatooine underworld. So with this episode, when um, we kind of start off with him and the droid and having the council with Fennec to get a summary of what is happening with the various factions, the territories that cover, who's running them, what happened after the after the death of Jabba, which was a nice return of the Je Jedi connection um, that after the sail barge incident, so I liked that. Um, Bib Fortuna took over, and then with the death of Bib Fortuna, that um, we now have... A power vacuum that this kind of gotten even more lawless because there's no one no primary uh, controlling factor to uh, rule the underworld so this leads us directly into the bulk of the episode as far as um, the whole thing with the watermonger um, Boba Fett deciding to take um, or expand his um, I guess his criminal organization. So I like that um, Boba Fett mentioned him grow himself growing up around water, which is a nice episode to Revenge of the Sith connection with his time growing up on Kamino. Um, with which I guess was all an interesting thing. So it looked initially I thought he was going to take the side of the water monger, but then I liked that he ultimately took the side of the workers because. It feels like he's more on their side because he knows where they came from. He knows the life growing up and the whole thing with his dad being a simple man trying to make his way in the world. So I think this is going to all ultimately lead into him wanting to rule with respect instead of fear, which is kind of the opposite with the various prior daimyos, the watermonger and their current way of do doing things. Um, and in this scene with uh, Boba Fett going into Mos Espa, we had a nice little Mandalorian connection. So if you watch that scene as Boba Fett is passing by the Stormtrooper helmets, or the Stormtrooper helmets, we do see the lady from the Mandalorian, the one in the um, repair shop who fixes um, the Mandalorian's ship. Um, and the one that the Mandalorian has a conversation with about not liking droids, um, who he dropped off um, Grogu with and all that. So that lady is walking by with the pit droid, so you have to look very carefully, but it does very much look like her. Um, and then, of course, we have a fight with Cranston, the uh, dark gladiator Wookiee. So I like that whole situation that he um, takes over the... Or he's able to infiltrate the um, fortress and attack Boba Fett without his armor. So the one advantage he has is taken away. But because Fett has now has a bigger crew, they're able to come to his rescue. Which kind of made me think about what his security system is like. Or if that's still being in, um, implemented. Because it seemed far too easy for Cranston to get into the fortress. So I'm kind of curious to see how they resolve that. Or because... Um, Boba doesn't have enough of an organization to monitor the security or maybe it's not working is why the Wookiee was able to get in um, and of course now in this episode we have what I think is a first but I could be wrong but we now have Hutz apologizing to Boba Fett as far as sending the Wookiee after him in the assassination attempts but it does feel like another ploy as far as um, basically telling Boba Fett that he's now going to be on his own. So they're, I guess they're kind of hoping, or it feels like they're kind of hoping that he's going to self-destruct and then they can come in. Um, and because Boba Fett is such a good bounty hunter that he ultimately takes out all the criminal elements for an easy return for the Huts to come in and retake Tatooine. So we'll see how that goes. But I do like that Boba Fett used the Rancor Pit to 
uh, capture the Wookiee and then he ultimately lets Cranston go and says it gives him the tip of not working for um, people he doesn't believe in because ultimately it's not really going to go the way he thinks. Um, and then of course we now have a solution to the Rancor issue where the Huts give um, Boba Fett a tribute and a gift in the form of the Rancor, or I think it was just a gift, the, the tribute was the tip for leaving Tatooine, but Boba Fett now has his own Rancor, and of course we have a nice little cameo by Danny Trejo as the Rancor Keeper, but I kind of feel like this is kind of what, what the um, Achilles heel or the um, infiltration by the Huts is going to be, or the new assassination attempt, because while... Um, Danny Trejo did let Boba touch the Rancor and um, is going to train him on how to ride the Rancor. It does feel like he he feels kind of shifty to the point where I think he's only doing that to to um, have Boba Fett lower his guards and then ultimately release the Rancor in Jabba's palace to take out Boba's clan and um, ultimately hope uh, hopefully um, Boba Fett himself. So we'll see how that goes, but that's just a side theory in my opinion. Um. And then as far as this Beater Bank game goes, I liked their introduction. Um, they're chasing after the um, assistant to the mayor. Um, it kind of felt very much like the Back to the Future 2 speeder bike game or the skateboard game, but on speeder bikes. So I liked all of that. Um, it was a kind of very, you know, 50s and 60s looking feel for the speeder bikes, but in, a Star, in the Star Wars universe. So I'm definitely hoping we can see more of them or more about their time in upgrading and um, pimping out their speeder bikes. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, it feels like ultimately they might just be the patrol element for the external security of Boba's palace. And then we'll see how he, I guess it's going to come down to how the war with the uh, Pike Syndicate goes as far as um, increasing his numbers or what happens with all of that to take over Mos Espa. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback of your own, did you like, dislike this episode, um, or any of that stuff, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.